Good morning, happy Friday morning. It's Friday the 14th, which is better than Friday the 13th if you're superstitious, but if you're not superstitious, then it's just Friday the 14th. So, happy Friday. Big boy hasn't pooped yet. Normally I break my walk up into sections of about a third. And, uh, go on. And normally he's dropped at least one load of earls off on somebody's lawn prior to when I start filming. So the odds of you getting pocket time are significantly decreased. However, this time, this time he is not. So you are almost certain to get pocket time. Although it's trash collection day. So the odds of me having to carry poop in my pocket are pretty slim, pretty slim. I know some of you are disappointed about that, but that is what it is. People have been talking about this Ibor Rob, new on the scene, I guess. I don't know. Uh, he's, I just saw a video of his that was mirrored by High Desert Community Watch. One man versus the city hall. Sounds heroic. Trust me, it's not. Uh, this jack and ape has zero idea of what the First Amendment is. He, in fact, asks an officer at the end if it's his First Amendment right to walk out that door. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, but then again, I guess if you get your education off YouTube, then uh, what are you really going to expect? So, uh, he goes down into City Hall. Great. It's a great way to start right? Uh, refuses to sign in. There is a policy that is up that says visitors have to sign in. He doesn't want to do that. That's fine. They let him sign in a fake name and uh, not show his ID because they're total tyrants, right? And that's what tyrants do. So then he's filming artwork on the wall, you know, you know the typical kind of holding the government accountable stuff that we've come to know and love. If there was a flagpole inside, I'm sure he would have filmed it. I didn't actually watch it. Uh, phone was in my pocket while we were walking, but I was listening to it. So there you go. Pulled it out at a few key moments. So maybe he did film a flagpole. I don't know. Anyway, but it's a standard, you know, neener, neener, neener. I'm auditing you kind of fair. And uh, please come. It's there supposed to do when somebody's being an ass hat and uh they're being totally cool totally chill they don't mess with them they don't get in his way they don't confront him they just they just chill they just chill but they're but they're tyrants mm -hmm. what do you say the uh biggest gang in america all right well if that's what you want to think if that's how you think then that's fine I mean, if you have a problem with an individual officer or an individual officer's actions, great. If you want to just tar them all together, well, then you run into the not all fallacy and there you go. So he's telling them, he's telling them it's their policy to ID while seconds before and seconds after he's complaining that there's supposed to be policies on the wall for people to see. Well, there's no policy on the wall saying that the officers have to identify. Have you ever seen that policy, Ibor? Have you ever seen it? I doubt you have. The policy that says those officers have to ID. He goes in there. And he's. I want to see. I want to see the city council. Well, what do you want to see about? What if I? What if I wanted to be a city council member? But you don't go to the city council to see about how to be a city council member. You just, you're just showing how uneducated and ignorant you are. And then, and then he had a, the, the guy he was talking to was really nice. And it's like, he was like, well, if you have problems like with the city council, why don't you come to a city council meeting? And I was like, whoa, whoa what makes you think I don't? Because Ivor has no fucking idea what's going on. Because he's never bothered to actually do activism in quotes, the right way, end quote. 
All he's ever done is walked around with the camera and been an asshat. So the guy's like, well, because I'm here every Thursday, and you're not. I was like, well, maybe I go to public meetings on other days. <laughs> I, I have a sneaking suspicion, without having reviewed, that the city council only meets for that particular city on Thursdays. Now, I'll bet I bet Rob has never been to a city council meeting. I bet he's never done anything to try to change anything for real. Oh, I'm an advocate for the homeless. Well, congratulations. That's great. You don't even know when the city council meetings are held, so um, pardon me for thinking that your advocacy may be somewhat useless. I mean, it's great if you give money to them and feed them or whatever, maybe house them. I mean, that's great. I mean, we need, we need people to do that. But uh, advocate and activist you are not, sir. It's just stupid things like, oh, there's a security camera in here. So since I'm being filmed, then it's my First Amendment right to go upstairs. And then it chickens out and takes the elevator down. Uh, just because it's owned by the city doesn't mean that you can do whatever the hell you want to do in it. Just because it's accessible to the public doesn't make it a traditional public forum. The city can maintain decorum within their city hall. They can enforce policies that aren't written and posted. Can someone please show me the law that says all policies for all government agencies everywhere at all times must be posted in a conspicuous place? Someone please show that to me. Think about, think about this in... Uh, and where they're getting this from, by the way, I know, is the uh, 41 CFR 102-74.420. 42 CFR. One of those CFRs. It's the GSA CFR. GSA has made a policy statement that says that their policies need to be posted at the front door of all of their, of all their properties. So, last I checked, some city in Florida is not, the city hall in Florida is not a GSA property. But they could also have their own policies. They don't have to use GSA policies, even if they are renting space in a GSA building. Anyway, my point is that these guys have it in their heads now that policies have to be posted in a conspicuous place. And they don't. They could be relayed to you verbally. Unless there's some other law or ordinance prohibiting that. And your it's not the First Amendment that prohibits it. It's It would be an ordinance or a statute or a regulation or a policy that prohibits enforcing policies that aren't displayed. So, yeah. He's just silly. He's just wrong. Uh, and he came out looking like an asshat. And the police... And the city hall came out looking very patient. So congratulations on achieving nothing, holding no one accountable, and basically just being an asset. You got nothing. I mentioned this on my Discord server yesterday. Um, it seems like informal chats start in the... Uh, in the general chat area, voice chats. And so I pop in to see what's up and then everybody patiently waits for me to entertain them. And that's fine. Anyway, um, so I mentioned this, that a, uh, a law enforcement official was gracious enough to help me out with uh, the right way to get records uh, he directed me to uh, Florida's so hopefully I will come back with some something better on Thief Jones and he also directed me to Texas how to do it in Texas and so Thief Jones did claim sometime as being a uh, law enforcement officer in Texas. 
I don't know if you guys remember this, but he claimed to be a uh, Texas Ranger. Uh, we're going to get pocket time. He's pulling. This is pocket time right there. Boom! Pocket time. Um, so he claimed to be a Texas Ranger and Dallas PD. I think there's a picture of him wearing a Dallas PD uniform, but I could be wrong. Hold on. We're going to go in the pocket. In pocket. So I could pick up a That's beautiful. Good job, buddy. Good job. All right, we have achieved Earl Free status. So, uh, yes. So, Texas, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get some more information on uh, Brother Jones, who's strangely gone quiet. I guess uh, I guess maybe he's had enough, but doesn't seem like I have. Huh, never start a fight. You're not willing to finish. Um, but also I have, I got rejected by Bear County on, uh, not rejected. Uh, they didn't have any emails relating to our good friend, Mr. Miller, who is also claiming a spectacular and clean record. Although I believe he has admitted now to having been fired and reinstated or something along those lines. But we are going to get to see. So, if these steps work, I will post the steps that I was instructed to take for Texas and Florida. So, people can do it for themselves. And if they don't work, then I won't. But uh, if you're wondering why I bought a laptop, or I guess technically it's a Surface, so it's not really a laptop, but it's laptop esque. Uh, the reason why I bought it is so I can do things like open records requests and things like that while I'm away on vacation because I got the open records request bug. Thank you very much, Teresa R. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing what you could find out with these open record requests. Everybody's little skeletons come out of the closet. It's so fun. Ah. Uh, I would totally open request Earl's federal law enforcement history, but there is none. So I may I may end up having to do a uh, open records request or a FOIA request on uh, on Earl's DD two fourteen to see if there actually is one. I know I've seen a picture of a VA card, but Lord knows those could those could never be faked. Especially not one that's apparently ancient. Somebody remarked to me about how old it was. And it was a picture of Earl when he was a very young man. So, so we'll see. We'll see. He's got to remember, the, the last claim Earl made was that he was in the army for three years. And that seems like a weird number to me. Seems like a very weird number to me. But uh, what do I know? I was never in the army. But he needed it to be three years, so he'd have time to uh, time to be a federal agent. But we all know how that story goes. It goes about as well as his story. Earl has this story about how his uh, his car or his van was shot up with him in it, and uh, his bullet counts. For hits and shots fired very wildly depending on on how his audience is reacting <laughs> and uh, it's amazing but he did forensic analysis himself because there's no like record of this anywhere but he did forensic examination of the bullets themselves and uh, they're apparently according to Earl the type of bullet that 
police officer's favor, so it must have been a police assassination. Mm-hmm. 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 Care to show us the uh, police report on that, Earl? Oh, my God, if that guy's lips move, he's lying. Anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, I don't know how much, like I said, I don't know how much recording I'll be able to do back east. I don't know how much internet my parents are going to have available and all that fun stuff. But I'll do what I can while my parents are napping and things like that. Because, yeah, I'm going to go back and see my parents because that's what a dutiful son does. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.